Welcome back. Um, all right, so before we go on in, in making our own project, I just want to show you my interface project three. So we looked at interface project two, which had three files. I have everything in one source code file here. So, and I'm going to go ahead and again and click this little, um, I don't know what to call it, button here. Or I right click it and I go to folding and click compress all and that minimizes my code so we don't have too much to look at we just have to look at the declarations of um, uh, methods and um, variables that's pretty much the things that it shows the main things so scrolling down you can see it looks pretty compact not too bad interface project on the bottom so if you see that this series is long uh, for whatever reasons because this really is a big project and as you can see 974 lines of code this is going to take a while to do so let's go ahead without further ado let's get started so first thing we want to do go here and create a java project in your ide um okay let me try this again here in your ide you might not see java project you'll see all of this but you won't see java project there um just click project it will take you to the same basic place here that's what I'll do um, so I'll click project and click you might this might not already be unfolded unfolded click Java project next the project name really doesn't matter it's completely arbitrary but I'm going to name it interface project for YouTube and click finish yep. all right so here now we need to add a couple class files. This is your source. This is where your source code goes. So right click new class. So we're going to have a huge integer. And this is, mind you, uh, I'm naming this huge integer. But what it really, um, and I would maybe even call it the interface class. Um, why do we call it huge integer instead? Because you're kind of making your own data type here. And you're not going to call your own data type an interface class. You're going to call it huge integer because it's a type that allows you to stick a, an 80 digit number into it. So that's why you would want to call your interface class that. And you'll see what I'm talking about later on. So we have that, which is our interface class. We're going to have another one, another class. We're going to call this one implementer class going to have another one. Oh, I just clicked Java project new class and we're going to call this one the main class and a little trick for those who don't know sometimes you right click here and you don't see rename you have to go to properties whatever uh, you can click there and press F2 and that will allow you to rename it quite easily without going through too much hassle you can do the same thing here uh, let me close all of these out you can do the same thing with the entire project folder by pressing F2. So let's open these up, up again. All right. Um, I have a tendency to write my blocked codes. Uh, traditionally, a lot of people put the block there. Um, I like sticking it right here. I, I don't know. It, it helps me keep things organized. Uh, five minutes left. So a uh, huge integer. I'm not going to change anything. That's what the professors provided to me, and I have to accommodate his design so I'm going to keep to his design so let's see where is it uh, this is why collapsing is also good you don't have to scroll as much there we go so here this is the whole huge integer class and I'm just going to take the top five methods here we're just going to start at with uh, addition um, get string get character array and have the maximum digit value so I'm just going to take this, copy and paste. All right. So stick that. Uh, oh, don't want to do that. There we go. That should work out just fine. Let's see. Got problems already? Hooray. Well, it, it's probably got problems because, first of all, I have it set as a normal, everyday class. And uh, probably it's expecting uh, actual source code to follow it if I put that maybe it would be a bit happier and then again it's not even uh, 
you, you also realize that this identifies the return type and we're not returning a type void which would make it happy you're going to see that Eclipse is very interactive in this fashion but um, all we have to do is correct this mistake instead of being a class you will be a public interface and as you can see it goes away when you press control shift s uh, it saves and um, uh, which we'll call it. it it'll get rid of the red X's so when I bring them back I type interface uh, it gets rid of them but sometimes you'll see them black there control shift s uh, will get rid of them so anyway now let's go to the implementer class so this is our implementer class and we are using this interface because you have to realize again as I say um, when I when I bring up these examples um, we have our three classes basically if this first one is the interface class here um, this class it's going to be used in this hierarchy this arrows in these arrows that I'm drawing okay this um, and I should have used different colors uh, red is interface blue is the implementer class here and green is the main class here so blue is going to use the red as a defining point for the public methods so I got two minutes left let's start with I don't know I'm not even going to I'm just going to complete the syntax here so huge integer it's the interface so this is the implementer class so we need to implement this is a keyword oh did I spell it right implement huge integer I'm spelling this wrong it looks like or does this have to be capitalized or something No idea what I was doing wrong before, but uh, let me roll back the tape later and see what it was. So now that I type in implement, I was probably spelling it wrong or something. Uh, you can zoom in and see uh, Eclipse turns it purple, meaning that it's a keyword that identifies. And you'll see that it's marked red X because we are not yet implementing these uh, public methods. So let, let's go ahead and just stick them in there just to make it happy for now we're going to stick them in there and let's see take off the semicolons first of all because this is where our actual source code is going to go and start sticking in blocks all right so now it's finding problems that we're not returning huge integer um, so let's go ahead and make it happy to just return this stick something in there temporarily until we have uh, our code all right let's see uh, get string wants a string return Bob wants a character array um, oh, it's no, there's no making this thing happy for now um, let's see let's just comment it out here and comment it out here Let's see, I'll just control shift slash will comment that out. So we'll save that for later. Alright. So now let's see I got uh I haven't been keeping track of the time. How much time do I got left? Okay, when this reaches six hundred that means I've reached ten minutes, so I'm about to reach six hundred. So basically just showed you how to set it up for the first time. Um, the next thing we're going to discuss in the next video is the constructor. So I'll see you in the next video.